my vision for peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians is that the, they will live together. I do not see the possibility or the need of separating between, uh, between them. It's not humane, it's anti-peace, it is uh, completely against uh, human nature to ask people to separate families, friends, and, and that's what we are really talking about. So when we are talking about separation, my vision is that Israelis and Palestinians would live in together, not separate. It's not possible to have them separate from each other. I'm not going to discuss now the two-state solution, why it's not possible. But in principle, it's not going to be possible to ever ask the Palestinians and the Israelis to create a border between themselves. Not only is it such a tiny area, but the people themselves, the Israelis and the Palestinians, are really the same the same people, the same culture. Most Israelis and most Palestinians are of uh, Arab descent, just like myself. We look alike. Our faces are alike. We have a very similar religion. We have similar culture. We have similar food. We have tremendous similarities. And the idea of separating them is not only unacceptable, but it's not, it's not for peace. It's, not, it's, it's artificial. It's artificial. So my vision is, and it's not only my vision, it's my prediction as well that Israelis and Palestinians would eventually, if we, if we uh, look 50 years from now, or 100 years from now, we will see that they are living together in peace. Hopefully in peace, but they are living together. So this is the first step. I think we have to recognize on both sides that eventually, Palestinians and Israelis are not separating from each other. Then the, the, then the and, and you know, the, the, the governments, the current governments, the Israeli government and the Palestinian governments, they don't share that vision. They are very nationalistic government. Um, they are a product of trauma, both. The, the, the establishment of the State of Israel is a product of trauma. The establishment of the uh, Palestinian authorities and Hamas is a product of trauma. And so those governments, they are, they are there to fulfill their people's needs as a result of that trauma. They are responding to that trauma, but they are not able to visualize peace. They never really talk about peace. They never really talk about what's their vision for peace. And unfortunately, the media in Israel, in Palestine, and really all over the world, when they approach that issue, they never discuss, they never ask the leaders, what is your vision for peace? 
not what do you, who do you blame, but what is your vision? What is your plan for peace? What is your vision? There are two different things. A vision, what do you see, what do you see uh, in, in your mind, what do you see in the next 50 years or 25 years? And then what is your plan to get there? These questions are not being asked by the Israeli government or the Palestinian government. It's not being asked by them and of them. It's not the, 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 the people of Israel and Palestine have been taught to accept such low standards that the vision of peace or a plan for peace is out of the question. It's kind of like a permanent abusive relations. And people ask me, well, you live outside the area. What is your business? Um, I think that because I live outside the area, it's easier for me to see the vision. It's, it's easier for me to see the potential for peace and a plan for peace. So m my vision is that they would eventually live together and, and in peace. But in order to live in peace, you have to have a peace plan. And I have a peace plan. I presented my peace plan several times. And I am, I'll tell you my peace plan right now. Not in full details because I'll do more videos about the details. The, but you'll see that, you know, they say that the uh, big print gives it and the small print takes it away. Um, I think that when you examine my peace plan, you'll see that the big print gives it and the small print gives it even more, meaning it's more detailed and it's more attractive for peace. I love it when people are skeptics because when they are uh, skeptics, they express their skepticism, they express, and when they do express their skepticism, and they point to a different to a, something that is in their head that bothers them, or they think is a a um, is a um, uh, uh, juncture that would prevent peace. I actually show them that whatever they are concerned about, my peace responds to it and actually makes it better. So. You know, we have a, a simulation uh, next Sunday. Today is Sunday, next Sunday on the 13th of December at 7 o'clock, I'm sorry, at 9 o'clock Los Angeles time, which is 7 o'clock Jerusalem time. Join it. Uh, send me an email. My name is Joseph Avisar at gmail.com. Send me an email. But let me tell you about my peace plan. Before that, let me show you let me grab a cup of water and, uh, and I'll show you my email and then I'll get to my peace plan. Okay, this is my email. Uh, I'll pull back Joseph Avasar at gmail.com. Uh, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation and I'll send you a password to the Zoom event and you'll see for yourself how this works. We do not sit there and denigrate the Palestinians or the Israelis. We just talk substantively about how this plan will be implemented. 
And when I say talk about it, we simulate it. We actually simulate it. Like, like some countries simulate wars, the army simulate war. We simulate the peace. Okay. So you would take the whole area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem as one big area, 14 million people. And we create a common government for that area. Now, we do not dismantle the Israeli government or the Palestinian governments. They are strong governments. They are there to stay. They are politically strong. They are economically strong. Militarily, they're strong in, all, in many, many aspects. But they are not able to make peace. So the government that I am speaking about will be a separate government from the Palestinian and the Israeli government. It would be a government for the entire uh, people of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza, 14 million people. It will represent those people. I'm speaking about a government that will be secular. It's not going to be Jewish or Christian or Muslim. It will not pass any religious laws. It's going to be a democracy with uh, one person, one vote. It's going to be separate and distinct and not um, controlled by the Israeli or the Palestinian government. It would be a government that would have three branches of government. It would be, it would have the legislative branch, the um, executive branch, and the judicial branch. All these three branches will be represented by both Palestinians and Israelis on an equal basis, meaning that the decision the laws, the parliamentary laws, the execution of those laws, the judges will all be both Palestinians and Israelis on an equal basis, and they will run this government. Now, this government will be side by side, parallel to the Israeli and the Palestinian government. It's not going to be, like I said, it's not gonna displace them. It's gonna be parallel, but it's gonna be separate. So how would this government be created? It would be created by a legislative process, but I'm sorry, but by a democratic process. There'll be a vote and we will elect that government. Okay, so we take the whole area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza and Jerusalem, and we divide the area uh, into 300 districts. Each district will, will, be, will encompass about 47,000 people. If you divide 14 million by 300, you'll get approximately 47,000. So we will have 300 districts of a population of 47,000 people. Each district will be represented by one person. That person would be either Israeli or Palestinian, depending on who is being voted. So in an area that is exclusively Palestinian, it would be a Palestinian probably be elected. In an, Isra in an area that is Israeli, it would be probably Israeli. But in a mixed area, um, it would be up to the voters to decide. In theory, it's possible for a Palestinian to vote for an Israeli, an Israeli to vote for a Palestinian in a mixed area. But 
eventually you will have 300 parliament uh, uh, members that are being elected. In addition, during the election, we will also elect a president and a vice president. Actually, the, the way it would be in the ballots, it would be a vote for the president. Whoever gets the most number of votes will be president. Whoever gets the second number of votes of the other nationality will be vice president. So if the president uh, is Palestinian, the vice president is Israeli, and they will rotate after two years. But they will each have specific duties based on the Constitution. And by the way, you can read the Constitution at uh, ipconfederation.org. It's in three languages, um, Arabic, English, and Hebrew. So both the, Palest the parliament, the um, president and vice president will be able to have uh, their specific um, constitutional duties. And they will act on behalf of the entire area of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. But the parliament members will represent their district. Now, the parliament would be the legislative branch of the government and the parliament will vote, will vote on legislation, on laws. Now, you may ask me, well, uh, Joseph, what about gerrymandering? How are you gonna prevent uh, not having enough, uh, more, uh, I mean, how are you gonna prevent uh, one side being uh, underrepresented? Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, gerrymandering is a term that is being used in, uh, in a, many democracies here in the United States, uh, in many states where one party is trying to manipulate the district so that it makes it more likely that people of that party will be elected. Um, based on the Constitution, you would need you would need fifty five percent of the Israeli Palestinian uh, Israeli Parliament members to vote yes, and fifty five percent of the Palestinian to vote yes on a legislation. So it really doesn't matter how many Palestinians are elected and how many Israelis are elected. So let's let's assume that uh, after the election we have three hundred Parliament members, and we have. 60, uh, I mean, um, and we have 160 Israeli parliament members and 140 Palestinian parliament members. So for those parliament members to vote on the legislation, you would need 55% of the 160 Israeli parliament members to vote yes, and you would need 55% of the 140 to vote yes on the legislation. And that's when the legislation will pass the parliament, but it's still not going to be law. Why? Because under the constitution, you still go to the Israeli government and the Palestinian government, and you say, here, we are the people of Israel and Palestine. We work together. We recognize your sovereignty. But we, we pass legislation that we think it was passed by both Israelis and Palestinians. We think it's good legislation. It's going to give peace and prosperity to, your, to the Israelis and the Palestinian people. But we are giving you a veto power over the legislation. If you veto the legislation, it's not going to pass. But if you do not veto the legislation, it's going to be the law of the land, of the entire area. So. Inherently, this system requires that the laws that the Israeli-Palestinian common government, it's going to be a common government, that the laws that they pass would be beneficial to everyone. And this would prevent the Israeli and the Palestinian governments from vetoing the legislation because if the legislation is good, if the legislation is helpful 
It gives peace and prosperity. Those governments, those separate governments, will not be able to veto the legislation because they would lose legitimacy within their own people. Not only would they lose legitimacy within their own people, they would lose legitimacy internationally. So, in reality, the parliament members would need to pass acceptable legislation to both sides. And there are many, many examples of legislation. By the way, um, we do that in the simulation. You can join it in the simulation. It's, the next one is December 13, uh, which is next Sunday. Today is Sunday, next Sunday at 9 o'clock Los Angeles time, 7 o'clock uh, Jerusalem time. Uh, let me give you my email. This is my email. Uh, stand back. Joseph Abbasar at gmail.com. When you send me an email, I will send you a link to the simulation and I'll send you a password to the Zoom simulation. You'll be able to join. You'll be able to, you'll be able to act as Israeli parliament member, Palestinian parliament member. Uh, we need people to act as Palestinian uh, presidents, Hamas leaders, Israeli prime minister. We need someone to act as uh, president of the United States, um, Germany's chancellor, World Bank, uh, Britain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because we're trying to simulate reality. We're trying to show how would people react when we pass legislation, and um, and and when we ask the leaders, we give them an opportunity to veto the legislation. So. Now, the, the president and the vice president, they will be able to go around and talk to the world leaders and talk to the Israeli leaders and the um, Palestinian leaders. And they would be able to negotiate with them. They would be the liaison between the... Uh, common government, the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation government, and the uh, Israeli government, the Palestinian government, Hamas government, and the world government. They'll, they'll be able to negotiate issues. They would, they would say, look, we want to pass this legislation. Uh, we don't want to embarrass you. Tell us ahead of time, are you, are you going to veto it? And if so, why? If they have a legitimate reason, then you amend the legislation. You make correction to the legislation. This is how uh, politics, this is how legislation is created. But I want to go back to, the, to my vision. My vision is that Israelis and Palestinians would live together. There is no way around it. Not only is there no way around it, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing for Israelis and Palestinians to work together. We are cousins. We are all from the same father and the same mother. We, are, we, are, we have to live together Unfortunately, our governments do not have a vision for peace, do not have a plan for peace, and this is why we need our own government, a common government for the Israelis and the Palestinians, a government that would respect us, that would respect the people, that would treat both the Israelis and the Palestinians openly, fairly, uh, in a friendly way, in a... Um, honest way and would, uh, would uh, deal with all the issues. We already know that the Israeli government, the Palestinian governments are not able to make peace. 
So please join me on uh, December 13 at uh, 9 o'clock Los Angeles time, 7, o'clock, 7 p.m. Uh, Jerusalem time. My name is Joseph Havasar. Send me an email to josephhavasar at gmail.com. I'll see you then, and hopefully um, we will make more uh, steps towards peace. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.